Sometimes when we are evaluating integrals, we have trig functions that show up with multiplicities. And um, if that's the case, sometimes we have to use trig identities to rewrite those. So this is these are trig identities that we know. We know the Pythagorean identities, and there are three of them. I'm just listing two of them here. We should know what the third one is. Um, and then also, these are the half angle identities. I think it's not double. Yeah, these are half angle identities. Um, if we are changing from sine of x to something in terms of 2x, um, but the, the order, or this is probably what you memorized, but the form of this that you are going to see with our substitution for integrals is if we square both sides of this equation, we get that sine squared of x is equal to, so the radical and the plus minus is gone, 1 minus cosine of 2x all over 2, and then cosine squared x is 1 plus cosine of 2x all over 2. Okay, so inside an integral, if we do this, um, I would actually recommend taking a 1 half, factoring it to the outside just as a coefficient, and dealing with the 1 minus or 1 plus on the inside. Keep in mind, you may still have u substitution happening. Okay, so let's look at a couple examples. Um, so here I've got sine cubed times cosine to the fourth. So I know that sine and cosine are each other's derivatives. Um, so when we are deciding which of these is going to involve our u and which one is going to be du, what we really want is a single sine or cosine left over. Okay, so if I'm looking at this sine cubed right here, I know that's the same thing as sine squared, whoops, sine squared x times an additional x. Okay, oops, that looks like an exponent. Okay, and then I also know that sine squared x is the same as, from my Pythagorean identity, the same as 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so, and I'm just kind of making notes up here. I'm not actually doing the work, but so when I replace sine cubed, um, I'm going to replace it with 1 minus cosine squared times sine. Now, the 1 minus cosine squared, I'm going to distribute that to the cosine to the fourth. So I end up with... 1 times cosine to the 4th, so cosine to the 4th x minus cosine squared times cosine to the 4th, so cosine to the 6th x, and then all of that is multiplied by this remaining sine x. Okay, then I have a dx, okay? Um, so all I've done is use the Pythagorean identity and factored out a sine x to, to change it to this. Okay, so now my u is going to be um, cosine, and my du is going to, and so these are both powers of u, and then my du is the sine. We're going to have to take a negative out, which is fine. So let's write that down. So u is cosine of x, du is negative sine x dx. So I'm going to multiply by a negative 1 on the inside, negative 1 on the outside. So in terms of u, this is the opposite of u to the fourth, minus u to the sixth du, okay? And then integrating that, I have the opposite of um, one-fifth u to the fifth. I'm going to make this a plus one-seventh u to the seventh plus c, which when we plug cosine back in is going to be negative cosine to the fifth x over five, plus cosine to the seventh x over seven plus c, and that is my answer. And if you want to leave it as a one-fifth out in front instead of putting it over five, you can. I was just uh, condensing it horizontally. Okay, now for this one, or for that one that we just did, because sine had an odd exponent and cosine had an even exponent, I picked cosine to be the u, and uh, sine... I took out a sine squared so that I had one sine left over, because anytime we're dealing with sine and cosine, we need a remaining one, either sine or cosine, as part of the du, okay? However, here, I have an even exponent, and I actually don't have any sines at all. So now I'm going to use um, my, I'm going to end up using my half angle identity to rewrite this. Um, and I know that this is the same thing as saying cosine squared and then that whole quantity squared. So I'm going to rewrite the cosine squared on the inside using the, um, using the half angle identity from right here. Okay. Um, and also remember I said I would recommend pulling out that one half 
And because there are two of them, since this is cosine squared squared, I'm going to pull out a one-fourth. Okay, so this becomes one-fourth times the integral. And so, um, again, I'm dealing with cosine squared on the inside. So that's going to be one plus cosine of 2x. And that whole quantity is squared and then times dx. Okay, and then uh, from here, I'm going to go ahead and expand that. So one-fourth, and sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error until you get to something that can be integrated, okay? So one-fourth times the integral of one plus two cosine two x plus cosine squared of two x dx, okay? The one I can integrate, the two cosine two x I can integrate, this one, I still don't have a sign, so I am going to use a half angle identity one more time on that one. So that's going to give me, and I'm actually going to split this into a couple integrals because I can integrate part of this already. So one fourth times the integral of one with respect to x is going to be um, x over four. And then plus, I've got this one fourth. Um, now I do have a composition in here, so you is 2x, du is 2dx, which is what I have. Um, so my integral of cosine u would be sine u. So, and don't forget the 1 fourth in front. So 1 fourth times sine of 2x, okay? Plus, and I still have a 1 fourth on this third part. So basically, you can think of it as like splitting these into separate integrals, like integral of 1dx plus this one as long as you apply that one-fourth to all of them. Okay, um, I'm sorry, I'm not quite writing everything out here, but hopefully you're following the algebra. So then we have one-fourth, and then with this one, I'm going to do another one-half. So let's make this one-eighth, and then one plus cosine of now 4x dx. Okay, so what does that become? That becomes, I'm going to cheat here and give myself a little more room. That becomes x over 4 plus sine of 2x over 4 plus, okay, so the integral, so I've got a 1 8th, the integral of 1 dx is another x, so that's going to be x over 8. I can combine those in my last step. And then plus, now here, again, I've got a composition, so let's call this u du, so I need a 4, going to divide by 4 on the outside, so that's a 1 over 32, and then the integral of cosine would be sine, so sine of 4x plus c, okay? And then condensing some things, x over 4 plus x over 8, so that would be 2x over 8. So I have 3x over 8 plus sine of 2x over 4 plus sine of 4x over 32 plus c. Okay, um, and actually I could use like a double angle identity to get this to, no, get this one to be in terms of 2x, but don't worry about that. Just leave it as two separate terms there, okay? Um, and again, if you're ever unsure if you've integrated correctly, you can always um, take the derivative and see if you get what you started with. Okay, let's do one more of these. So here I have sine cubed of 5x. Oops, okay. Um, so for this one, I've got sine cube of 5x, and for this one, I'm going to, um, I'm going to split this into sine squared times another sine, similar to what we did up above. Slide that down a tiny bit, okay. So I'm going to write it as, so this is, again, it's sine squared of 5x times another sine of 5x. So the sine squared, I can write as 1 minus cosine squared. So I've got the quantity of 1 minus cosine squared of 5x times a sine of 5x dx. Okay, um, so now from here I'm looking at, well, the, the integral, if I distribute this, the integral of the sine of 5x, that's no problem. I can do that with a u substitution with a coefficient. But the cosine squared, now I've got cosine as my u um, this is a power rule, quantity squared, and then this is part of my du, but again, I need to look at the, uh, the 5 that's happening. So, actually, a better, well, I'll go ahead and split this. So, um, the integral of 1 times sine of 5x, 
my u is the 5x, my du is a 5, so I'm going to multiply by 5 on the inside, divide by 5 on the outside. So I have 1 fifth, and then the integral of sine of, five, of, sine of u would be negative cosine u. So it's negative 1 fifth cosine of 5x. If you need to write out another step with the u substitution, go ahead and do that, okay? And then I have cosine squared of 5x times sine of 5x. So for this one, my u, or let's use v, my v is going to be cosine of 5x. So my dv, I would need a negative 5 sine 5x, okay? So I still need to multiply by 5, divide by 5 on the outside. I already have the negative. Um, and then this is u squared, okay? This is, or sorry, v squared. So then my integral would be 1 third v cubed, okay? So that's going to give me, actually I'm going to have a plus because integral of negative u squared would be negative 1 third u cubed, but I need a negative there. So plus, and I've got the 1 fifth that I'm multiplying for the derivative of v, um, and then also the antiderivative of v squared would be 1 third. So all that together, hope, hopefully you followed it, but again, write it out in a couple steps if not. So 1 fifteenth times u cubed, so cosine cubed of 5x. Oops, didn't mean to move that part. Cosine cubed of 5x, and then plus c. Okay. Um, let's see, we had two more here. Um, I'm actually going to skip this one because it's pretty similar to the one we just did, um, except we're going to use um, fractional exponents, but it's still going to turn to the power rule with Pythagorean theorem. Um, I will, I believe I have more than just these five on your blank notes, so I'll make sure that all of those are filled in, but I'm not going to do another example of that. I want to hop down to this one um, just so we can see something other than sine and cosine. So this one is tangent cubed over secant, okay? So when we're thinking about tangent and secant, there's actually a couple of ways to look at this. If we end up with two secants left over and then tangent to any power, well, secant squared is the derivative of tangent, so that means my tangent would be u, and my secant squared x dx, or secant squared, you know, whatever, d whatever, is going to be my du. Um, if I have one tangent and one secant left over, then that means um, I'm looking for u to be secant to a power because that remaining secant with the tangent is the derivative of secant, okay? Now, this is in the denominator. The secant is in the denominator. So when I say left over, I don't mean, I don't mean as it is, okay? Um, what we need to do is we're going to use a Pythagorean identity and do some um, some rewriting or some some algebra to simplify. Okay, so tangent cubed, I know is tangent squared times another tangent, and then tangent squared is the same as secant squared minus one. So one of these, or so this tangent squared is going to be secant squared x minus one, and then I have an extra tangent left over. Okay, so then that becomes... Okay, so when I do secant squared, I'm going to distribute here. So secant squared times tangent divided by secant, one of those secants cancels out, and I'm left with secant x tangent x, which is nice because I know that that's the derivative of secant. And then I've got a negative 1 tangent divided by secant, okay? And I can actually simplify that to be minus. So tangent divided by secant would be sine over cosine times cosine, so which is just a sine. Whoops. Sine x dx. Okay, then this integral actually becomes pretty straightforward. I don't need to do any other substitutions. Integral of secant tangent is secant. And then integral of negative sine is a positive cosine and then plus c. Okay, um, so hopefully you saw enough examples. I know I only did I think one that used the double angle identity, but I will fill uh, complete the rest of them and make sure you get um, full notes with all the examples filled in.